Hey mommies, how are you? So I'm sorry it's been like a couple of weeks I think since I last had a, um, a live video. I'm really sorry about that. I've been like super busy with a bunch of different um, projects and different stuff that I'm doing. But I do want to bring something to you today because in fact I was just talking about it yesterday with my husband. We were talking about um, a friend of ours that is pregnant and stuff and we were talking about postpartum, like once you come home with the baby and like um, just discussing like different ideas about how women feel after they have a baby. And he was kind of like not acknowledging the importance of that fourth trimester and the importance of postpartum. And he was like, kind of like, I guess because we kind of, maybe he forgot about it because we now have an 18 month old. Um, so you kind of tend to forget about birth and about all that stuff that happens at the beginning. Um, I don't, of course, <laughs> but usually other people do. It's very, very normal. But I just wanted to bring that to you today because it's super, super important. Like that's the number one tip that I can give any mom, whether it's a new mom or a fourth time mom or a fifth time mom, the best way that you can truly build your milk supply and the best way that you can heal, the best way that you can connect with your baby, the best way that you can kind of come back after pregnancy because people really take for granted that time once you come home and you're with your baby. Those first 40 days are so important. In fact, I would say they're just as important as like your first trimester when you're really taking care of yourself and your baby's starting to come together and it's such a sensitive time. Um, the same, it's exactly the same with your fourth trimester, which is your postpartum period. And the reason for that is because imagine, you've just gone through this whole nine months of making a baby and all these hormones and things happening in your body. And then from one day to the next, you have your hormones here and then they're like, boom, they peak drastically down. So there's so much stuff going on with you emotionally. Um, you know, and not just that, but a lot of women actually express this, that they miss their bump. They miss their baby being in there. And when your baby is inside of you, you don't really have to do anything. Your placenta does everything. So you kind of like relaxed in that sense. But once your baby comes out, you have that. So you have kind of the loss of being pregnant, the loss of having your bump, and now you have your baby with you. So it's like a reality shock, like, oh my God, how am I supposed to take care of this baby? Second of all, your survival instincts kick in like a cave woman style. My husband was laughing, he's like, what, you think you're a cave woman? <laughs> yes, that's how I feel. After I have a baby, and I've done it twice, I get this natural cave woman instinct, which is this survival instinct where I wanna protect my baby. I don't like anybody to touch my baby. I get super protective of my baby. I'm not normally like that. I'm so chilled out with my kids, like seriously. Um, but when it comes to my newborn, I'm like super protective. I don't want anybody to touch my baby. I want to be able to do everything for my baby. And I have this incredible, immense feeling that I have to provide for my baby. And most women have that. That's why when you're not able to breastfeed, you go into this like depression mode because the one thing you're supposed to do for your baby, which is, you know, once your placenta's done everything else for your baby, now you step in and you have to provide for your baby. So it's like a super, um, I don't know, uh, in instinct. It's like a supernatural instinct that we have inside of us to be able to do that for our babies. So there's so much stuff going on. So it's really important that you take care of yourself, that you take time to kind of connect with yourself again, get to know yourself again, because you've gone through the stages where you're like pre-pregnancy, so you're like you, and now you're pregnant, so you're like this other person with a big bump, and maybe you waddle a little bit like a penguin, and then now you're this person with a baby. So all of a sudden in this like 10 months, 12 months, you've gone through this huge transformation of different hats you've been wearing. So. I don't like to kind of make it complicated, but I like to be real about it because that's what you go through. And some people take it really lightly and it shouldn't be taken lightly because you go through so many, it's like a whole roller coaster of emotions. So it's really important that you take time in your postpartum period to be at home, to take things slowly, to get adjusted to things. And your baby needs that too. You kind of, I know that he's been or she's been in you for nine months, but now you're getting to know each other, what he likes, what he doesn't like, um, how he likes to nurse, how he doesn't like to nurse, that he likes to just have a little bit of a feed and then a little bit of a snack. So you get start to get to know all these things about your baby and the way that you do that is you with your baby, not other people carrying your baby, giving your baby a bottle, 
obviously you need help and I acknowledge that, but you're the one that has to get to know your baby. You're the one that's gonna provide for your baby. So it's very important that you two connect, that you room in. One of the most amazing experiences that I've had is that spending those first 40 days with my baby and just spending time with my baby, just being in bed with my baby all day. And I'm like, you wanna help me? Okay, great, do my laundry, help me with my other kids. Please help me cook lunch. Um, so help me with other things, but I concentrate on the baby. So I spend time with the baby. I do a lots of skin to skin with my baby, sometimes all day long. So now I, I like with my second baby now I really felt comfortable just kind of laying in bed pretty much naked with my baby um, Just really really spending that skin to skin time and all those things the fact that I was relaxed the fact that we were exchanging body heat um, The fact that my baby could feel my heart where he's been you know what he's been listening to for the, the nine, last nine months all those things contributed to me being able to produce a good milk supply to establish a good milk supply. Also, in those first 40 days, that's when you establish how much milk supply you're gonna have from the um, supply and demand. Your baby is going to be demanding, your body's going to be supplying. So the more your baby's demanding and you're giving him that opportunity to be on you, to be nursing all day, the more milk your body's gonna produce also. The other thing too, if you're at home, if you're relaxed, not having lots of family visit and lots of like, I'm gonna go to the mall now that I can go out, now that you know I'm not this big giant walrus walking around. Um, you know, that's I, I respect everybody's decision, but if you take that little bit of time to spend at home, you're also gonna take time to be better nourished, to have the foods and supplements and nutrition that you need so that your body's able to recover also, so that your body's able to function better. Also remember, your body's gone through this, all these changes, it needs to adjust to pre-pregnancy stage too. So give time for your womb, you can do little massages, you can take you know showers, and I know that you have a newborn and you have other kids around and stuff like that, but if you're at home, you have more time to do that. And then once you're able to step out after those six weeks, then your baby is going to be better connected with you. You're gonna feel more relaxed. You're gonna feel more ready to go out there. So just, I've spoken about a lot of different things, but I just kind of wanted to give you a very big overview of what goes on in those first 40 days on how important it is for you to embrace them and really take care of them. In fact, centuries ago, I and mean, in a lot of different cultures, not so much here in America because we're so like, you know, I meet a lot of women, they have a baby, they go back to work in two weeks. It's really crazy. We don't respect that time that moms need to have with their baby, like maternity leave and all that stuff, but I won't go with her because that's a whole different subject that I'm gonna go into. But we don't respect that. And in lots of other cultures, in Chinese cultures, in um, Latin American cultures, they have that tradition. They have, it's called like the diet, they call it different things. And it's where family come together to take care of the needs of the mom so mom can concentrate on baby. And it's like a sacred ritual or however you wanna call it, but it's something that is really, really sacred and they really respect it. And it's mom's time to recover. And it's something that families do. Um, some of them go, re like I'll give you just an example. In Colombia, for example, they're not so much now, but like years ago, they used to do a really strict diet, which was that the mom would pretty much stay in bed and with the baby, uh, and not leave the room for 40 days. And in those first, in those 40 days, she would eat a whole chicken soup. Like they would make soup out of a whole chicken. So 40 chickens every single day. So she would have like chicken broth with the vegetables and lots of whole things, whole rice, um, whole pastas and things like that. And this soup, which was like a super nutritious soup for the mom to be able to recover and for her to be able to provide everything she needed for her baby. And everybody else would take care of all the chores and the mom would just concentrate on getting better and spending time with her baby. How cool is that? Can I have one of those? <laughs> so, um, so they really, really took this into account and they didn't just do it for the sake of doing it. They've done it because it was able to, um, you know, allow those women to recover and to be able to provide for their baby. So I feel like in those days, we didn't have so many struggles and so much um, concerns with breastfeeding. It just came so much easier, but I think it was because all these external things were happening to enable that. So um, it's pretty cool. Um, I really, really urge you if you're pregnant, kind of, Think about how you're gonna um, deal with your postpartum period with your fourth trimester and what you're gonna do and what you need to have in place to be able to make it that recovery time and that time to nurture and spend with your baby. 
So if you um, are Hispanic or you're Chinese or from India, maybe I think in India they also have that culture um, of the diet or whatever they call it. Let us know what it's like for you and what your how your family gets involved and what you do. Um, or now we have the, the ability that um, we have doulas and midwives and all these nurses that are disposed to that that's what they they do as a career to take care of moms after they have their babies. And that's pretty, pretty awesome. I've actually thought about that if I have a baby again. Um, I'd love to venture um, down that road because um, it would just give me like peace and quiet at home, but I would have someone uh, helping me take care of my baby and with my kids and stuff. So I just think doulas is a great idea. And I really actually want to learn more about that and how um, I can teach you guys about that too, how you can take advantage of doulas because I think it's an amazing way for you to be able to you know, come home and be able to take care of everything. Thank you, mommies. Bye.